Hey everyone, Ben Nukikoff presents Bear Bets. Week three of the college football season it is upon us. Chris Flake will be joined by Jeff Schwartz. Jeff, before we get into the wagers that we are have actually made or will be making this weekend, I want to tell you how my football weekend went. Please. Saturday, I lived the nightmare that was Lubbock. We talked about the holy trinity of weirdness <laughs> in college yes. football. And once again, weirdness happened in Lubbock. An awful. One of the one of the viewers, by the way, and listeners actually suggested that we have, we have a segment called Mr. Right Side for like the, all of the bad beats, like the right side wrong result. Yes. Clearly, Texas Tech was the right side in that game, and they did not get there. So, thank you to the, uh, the that observation for Mr. Right Side. Texas Tech was the right side, but they did not get there. Sunday, remember how we on the NFL pod we talked about how be careful of Washington. Very even though Arizona is not very good. What happens? Arizona hangs in the game, and I'm like, I'm going to go with Seattle. I don't know how they're going to lose to the Rams. Well, <laughs> Seattle was my top survivor pick, and that knocked me out of most of my survivor pick pools. And then on Monday, the New York Jets lost Aaron Rodgers for the year. That, that was the summation of my of my football week. And so hopefully, you got a little better news than I do. I do have better news for you because we made a side bet on the Oregon Texas Tech game. We 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 bet a breakfast bagel because we see each other obviously Thursday mornings to re- record this fine podcast. And um, I had prepared your order, was ready to go. Then Jeff Boss intercepted the football. Oregon covered that game, but I got one for you anyways, Bears. I feel bad. I'm gonna hope oh. I cheer you up here with this nice little uh, bagel. Thank you so it's, much. It's a, it's a salt bagel, oh, as you requested. Sausage, and cheese, double egg, and cheese. So hopefully, you, you, I will. you feel better after that because I, I feel bad for you, buddy. Because I know Oregon won the game. But some of these bad beats in college football alone, the steam. So when a lot of money comes in on one side before the game and the number moves, obviously, in that direction, for example, Oregon was was getting was favored by six and a half that kicked off at about Oregon minus four and a half. So a bunch of money came in on Texas Tech. The steam in college football this year, it's gone the opposite direction. It has not it has not been the winner um, when when those big money whales come in and bet on that team. It, it, it was a night when I was sitting there in Boulder on Saturday and. I was looking at the closing numbers, and, I'm, and, I, and I literally I said, I am going to get slaughtered today. I, I, my, you can have whatever closing line value you want, <laughs> but I'm looking at my games, and I'm like, New Mexico State plus 13 to plus 10, Temple plus 10 to plus 7.5, Troy plus 17 to plus 14.5, Cal from plus 6.5 to plus 4, Texas Tech from plus six and a half to four. I go, I am going to get slaughtered today. And sure enough, it did not go well. Typically, closing line value is great, but why does it not work so far in college football this year? Is there, are more people wagering these games? Is there more information on these games now? Like, why is that not happening I, I, at the same way? I, I, I don't to? know. I, I would rather be a look, I, I know there, there are people out there that are going to probably like hate on me for saying this, but I, I want no part of that. I would rather just have a, have a number where it, it doesn't move. It's just whatever it is, it is because I know the feeling. <laughs> it, 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 anyway, it, it, anyway, if two and three is going to be the worst week of the year that I have, I will accept that. So we're four and six through two through two weeks. Hopefully, we can uh, do a little bit better this week on on what's a kind well, of a kind of an ugly kind of card, isn't it? It's a gross card, yeah. There, there's you have to dig deep into college football this week. This this often can be entertaining weeks. That maybe especially with a lot of the the road favorites, the ranked road favorites on the road. There's going to be obviously some sort of craziness that happens at some point. But we have to just suck it up this week for next weekend because next weekend is a monster college football weekend. Let's get to your best bets for this week. Your bear bets yep. for this week. We're starting off with Iowa State. At Iowa here. Iowa State's one and one. They lost last weekend to the rival Iowa 20 to 13. Typical slugfest with those two. I excuse me, Ohio is two and one. They lost to San Diego State in week one. And their quarterback is now back. They beat Long Island and they beat FAU. Who you got? Iowa you, State. You, 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 mentioned, Iowa. Rourke, Rourke, you mentioned Rourke Ohio. getting hurt in the game against San Diego State, and they looked like the right side in that game with Rourke. And now that he's back, they went on the road. It didn't score a bunch of points last week against FAU. I think that was surprising, I think, to a lot of people how low scoring that game was. But they did come away with the win. And now it's a rare opportunity for Ohio. You get a a, a MAC team getting a Power 5 team at home. Matt Campbell bringing, obviously, former MAC coach, bringing his Iowa State Cyclones to Athens. Like, I am an Iowa State fan. Like I, I, I am I am attached to this program. I, I I love their program and I love the type of football they play and I love Matt Campbell as a head coach. But 
Last couple of years, it just hasn't gone well. Uh, obviously, they had some issues in the offseason having to dismiss a couple of players for the, yeah. the Iowa betting stuff. But again, here, you're going on the road off of a game where, again, you struggled offensively. <laughs> Brock Bobek, Anthony Beck's son, the yes. quarterback for, for Iowa State. Offensively, they just haven't gotten it going. Like, 250 yards in the open against Northern Iowa, 290 last week, including a pick six. I don't think they're going to go on the road to Athens and find things much easier because Ohio's defense has actually played pretty well against last week against FAU and Tom Herman and that offense, and then in the opener against San Diego State. So this is a um, this is a very tough spot, I think, for the Cyclones coming off of the loss in, in their rivals against Iowa and right before the Big 12 season starts. It circle the calendar type game for, for, for OU. Ohio U, not, not Oklahoma, <laughs> but uh, give, me a, give me the Bobcats plus the three here in Athens. Yeah, Iowa State's offense is 117th in the country in points per drive. Ohio's not much better. They're 105th, no. but do you think the quarterback being back changes some of the numbers that we saw? Yeah. I, I do. I, I think the fact that he you played the, had the LIU game where he wasn't as a part of that game, yeah. and then he missed half the – at the San Diego State, I think that does matter. He did. He, he did look good against San Diego State. I mean, that's kind of the the thing you have to do in some of these injuries. You have to go back and watch the previous games and see because the first half of that game, I think uh, a bunch of us were on uh, Ohio in that game, and yeah. it probably was the right call until the quarterback got hurt. It's the right side on the right side. All right, let's get to the next game here. It's Syracuse. At Purdue, we're going back to PU here. <laughs> Purdue getting two and a half points. It feels like it feels like a sweet feels like a sweet sixteen game, does. doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Even yeah, though Syracuse, Purdue, by the way, two and zero. Oh. Purdue can't get out of the first round, so it actually it can't be a sweet sixteen. Game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll handle that on a different show in March. Uh, Syracuse is two and zero. Oh. They've outscored Colgate, woo, and Western Michigan one thirteen to seven. Purdue is one and one. They lost to Fresno State in Week One before bouncing back to beat Virginia Tech last weekend. Uh, uh, Bear, what do you got here? You you, you said it like. You, like I think people are seeing like the scoring margin well, against Colgate, an FCS team, and Western Michigan, who's one of the worst teams in the MAC this year. I was surprised Syracuse was favored here on the road. But Purdue probably should have beaten Fresno State. They blew a double-digit lead and, and, and got stopped on fourth and goal there when they had an opportunity to take the lead back. Like I, I think with Hudson Card uh, in the offense and that Purdue offense now, I think coming home against the Syracuse defense that. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll see this week when they when they face a real team uh, for, for the first time. Like I, I think a little bit too much is being made of the scoring margins early, and I think that's one of the things that you need to kind you need to kind of differentiate uh, early in the year. Like you see a two and zero team was beaten, like I said, Colgate and Western Michigan, and then you have Purdue, who's one and one, and they played a good Group of Five team in Fresno, who is going to be definitely a bowl team, and then they go on the road and you beat. Virginia Tech was not a great team, but you went on the road to Blacksburg and, and you beat a Power Five team. So, like, I like Garrett Trader, the Syracuse quarterback, but at the same time, I think with, with Ryan Walters and that defense, I think he being a defensive minded coach, I think they'll be able to scheme some things up. And uh, yeah, give me uh, give me Purdue plus a two and a half. And if you want to buy up to three for uh, for a little safety, I, I don't I have anything against that. Uh, I think it's important you note sort of the opponents' teams play right because I think people do not give enough credit for Power 5 teams going on the road to beat other Power 5 teams. It's hard to win a Power 5 football game, yeah. especially on the road. And look, yeah, Purdue won ugly against Virginia Tech, but that should be taken as a positive versus Syracuse playing nobody and not coming back home. And we know Purdue is is tough to play at home. It always seems to be, especially if you're a favorite, you lose it at Purdue. It's interesting because you you brought something up there, and R.J. Young actually had a note early in the week that he tweeted out. It's a great note that there were only – Two. A handful of teams that played a bunch of Power Five teams in, in, in the first two weeks of the year, and only two of them are undefeated Utah and Colorado. Pac 12, baby, 18 and 3. 18 and 3, the final year of the conference. It's, Look at us, it's eight great teams. How awful is that? It's I mean, I, we, we've said it every. It's a fun conference, and they got all. It, uh, the, yeah, the, best, the best year that they're going to have in a long – and they may get a playoff team this year. I, and I don't they're think there's going away. I think we just, we're going to beat ourselves up to, yeah, to, to we, death. I mean, yeah. you know, next weekend, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. you got you got Colorado and Oregon, and you have Washington State, Oregon State. So you have two, you know, just probably two, three what no a, teams. What an interesting other. game there. I, I know. I, I, I'm curious to see what goes on there. I'm sure there'll be some uh, – And Pullman? Yeah. It's Washington State plus two is on, on, on the look ahead. Not, not even the look ahead, but just like the two like out – the two like remainders in the conference. They're like – Attached but at the hip now, the Wazoo and, and Oregon State teams that have nowhere to go. For the coin toss, do they all come out like like arm in arm, just to form like a little circle around?
around like the Pac-12 <laughs> logo and just hold it tight, hold it tight together. Uh, so we'll, we'll have plenty more on those games next weekend. All right, let's get to your, your last uh, bet right now before we get to your best bet later on. Uh, Louisiana Monroe at Texas A&M. Monroe is 2-0. and uh, They won close games against Army and Lamar. They've only scored 41 points this season. A&M is 1-1 one one after losing to Miami this past weekend. Uh, A&M is favored by 36 points with a total of 53 and a half. Normally, this would be a spot where I would want no part of laying a massive number with a team that was just upset in a, in a big game. And now you come home, and it's kind of a sleepy atmosphere. Fans are disappointed that you, you went on the road and Jimbo Fisher and A&M lost another like big game. But they were so sloppy in that game that, that I think they need to work on some things. I, I think practice will be will be wretched up this week. I think I think they'll be dialed in. And, and you hit on it. This, this is a UL Monroe team that scored 41 points in two games, 24 uh, against uh, whoever the heck it was, Lamar. Lamar, FCS yeah. team, and then 17 against Army. <laughs> like, shutout is very, very much in play here for, for, for A&M to pitch a shutout against you. Like, there's no way – they will be able to handle the A&M front. And I think on the other side of the ball, the AM and offensive line yeah. will just be able to score at will. Like, like this has, this has like 49, nothing written oh, yeah. all over it. Cause I, I do think that the A&M often like Wegman was fine. Like he did all he could last week. Yeah. They just were so sloppy, made too many mistakes at special teams and on the defensive side of the ball, missed a ton of tackles. So I do like I said, normally I wouldn't want to lay a massive number here, but I think this situation and the and the opponent for AM uh, dictates a play on the Aggies. You mentioned how teams can maybe come back and be a little sleepy at a home game. Crowd probably not going to be hundred percent there. But I'll tell you a reason I like AM here. Their offensive line didn't play terribly well against Miami. Mm-hmm. And they're going to want to come out here in this game. And it's a form of time, but I know this feeling. And they're going to want to dominate a Monroe team that they should dominate, right? Like like the entire week, they're going to be challenged to play better, to finish. And they're going to try to do that the entire game. And that's why I think it's a great wager. Cause as you mentioned, I mean, look, 38, nothing. And and you cover the spread. Like it's not, it's not very hard to cover the spread. If you don't allow any points, I think Monroe cannot score in this game. And you know, if if A&M lost that game, but didn't lose it because their offensive line wasn't as good or they, you know, didn't get pushed around. I'm going to feel differently about taking them here, but they got pushed around. They're going to want to come out and dominate Monroe. So only three this week yeah. for bear. There was a, there was a fourth that I'm going to get to in the, uh, I think coming up here when we talk, yeah. as I destroy my mic here, when we talk <laughs> with, uh, with Will and Sammy yeah. B as well, but yeah, three, those three, I feel good about right now. And then we have the, uh, the best bet later in the show. Is there anything else that, that, that kind of you you want you might want to get a, an opinion on or anything before we get to that let me let me recap your your wager so everyone can remember these I think I said Iowa earlier but it's Ohio plus yes. three against, uh, Iowa, against State. Iowa State uh, that game obviously Iowa Iowa State last weekend God bless you if you watched that game <laughs> uh, Syracuse on the road at Purdue Purdue is favored by two and a half I feel like that number is going to come down before kickoff I that think, might it, be I think your, it will one of your steam games there Bear great and then, look forward uh, to that Louisiana Monroe at Texas A and M Lane at thirty six with a and um, You know, there's, it's again, it's a very interesting slate of, of games this weekend, and we're going to cover a lot of them in, in our gambling group chat in a little bit with uh, with uh, with Sammy Will. Check out the schedule here. Um, I saw this number here. Alabama is on the road at South Florida. They're favored by mm-hmm. 32. Um, I Look, trends, sometimes good, sometimes right. bad, mostly bad, but I saw a trend that, that since 2007, the under has hit in 14 straight games after an Alabama loss. Well, what does that tell you? Their defense just comes out just like angry, just to destroy someone. And again, again, you're right. A lot of people scoff at trends, but that's something that I think the teams may change. The situation remains the same. Like that is a sign of Alabama after they lose. Nick Saban getting in there, getting back to nuts and bolts, focusing on defense, running game, control the game, help your defense out, and and. and Pitch a shutout, play, play yeah. great. Now, some people may say, I know there would be, I would love to be able to see the opponents for those games because maybe it was losing to LSU and then you play North Texas or whomever uh, in a. Um, well, they're doing that now, right? I mean, they're, yeah. playing, they're playing South so, Florida. Actually, I think I have that right here. Which um, would also lend credence as to why this is applicable. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think it, it can be in this game because I'm surprised they're at South Florida, by the way. They feel like they. Yeah, I, they, I don't know what. It, are, are they a, pay, is South Florida paying them to show up? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say there'll be probably more Alabama fans than they will. Absolutely. Be. Like, like why? Why would Alabama? I'm trying to think what the connection might have been because Jeff Scott was at South Florida. He's not. At, I mean, he was at Clemson. 
I don't know. Maybe Nick Saban wants to recruit the part of the of Florida, and this is a way to. to yeah, it's to exactly what we need. Nick Saban to have a, a, another recruiting yeah, area to, I know. to tap into. Another game that caught my attention: Central Michigan's at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is favored by thirty-four and a half, uh, but they play Ohio State next weekend. Is this a spot where Notre Dame just comes out completely flat? I don't think so. I, I think after what you saw last week, and I still think they hear the doubters. I mean, I, look, I, I don't think there's any way around the excitement on that campus uh, for, for that game. It's probably the biggest game in South Bend since the, uh, the Bush push game. But uh, again, it is a lot of points, but I don't know how good Central Michigan's defense is to be able to slow down Hartman in that passing attack. I know. It's crazy what a good quarterback does for you, right? Yeah, to add, add some Hartman, Notre Dame becomes really good. Look, Notre Dame's schedule is so interesting, right? They have, they have Ohio State and then USC in like two weeks. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough. Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever, whenever this season in South Bend, it's always in October. Yeah, right? October. I think that game's October fourteenth. One more before we get to our gambling group chat here. You, you, Enchantment Bowl, right? New Mexico, New Mexico State. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How'd you know? Who you got on that one? I'm not betting New Mexico State after the no. Visit. What the Lobos? How, shut yeah, out right. in the second half last week. I know. And they have that great logo that we liked on the screen the other day. So I'm so disappointed. How I, many fans in New Mexico? Is, is this like the entire the, state? The, 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 this is this will be a big. Yeah, this is a big game out there. They get into it. Would you call the the game enchantment? Right, New Mexico is the land of enchantment. Oh, do, do they actually name the game the enchantment? I oh. did. <laughs> you did. Okay. It's like the last one that's interesting. Before again, we're going to cover most of the rest of the slate with with the gambling group chat. Um, Kansas State is on the road as a favorite, but only four and a half points it's, at Missouri. This one's stinky, right? I've had more people ask me about this game than any other game this week. Like, why is Kansas State such a short number against Missouri, who really hasn't looked great in their two wins? And Kansas State was, was dominant last week in, in, in the win over Troy pulling away. Like, why, why, are, the, why are the two former conference foes, why, why is it only four and a half here? Like, this is a game I would want no part of. Uh, I mean, yeah. every kind of like Oregon, Texas Tech last week, everything football-wise – told you that Oregon was the better yes. team and should win and cover. Everything football-wise tells you Kansas State is the better team, should go there and win and cover. But why is the number so low? It scares me. It, it should scare you. I've seen num- I've seen people that, that put this game at 10, and so to see this come out right. at, at, at four and a half is, and re- is low. And remember last year, as bad as like Missouri had went on to have a, 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 a poor season and as, people, as down as their fans are, they nearly beat Georgia last year in Columbia. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, they did. Yeah. It, weird, weird <laughs> stuff. Sometimes weird things happens there. All right, guys, we have so much more to get to with all these ranked opponents on the road. And we have Colorado talk as usual, cause they will not stop winning, which is good. It's good for them to win. Cause there's some value later on, but let's get to our gambling group chat. It'll be me. It'll be the bear, Sammy and Will Hill. The gambling group chat is back. Jeff, Sammy P Will Hill, myself. And I think after last week, there's only one question that needs to be asked. Like, is Colorado to go undefeated a worthwhile bet to make? I, I, Sammy, I know you probably feel strongly about that, right? You, you're, you, you made that bet already? I have not yet. You know, obviously, we all know they're going to beat Oregon next week. The question is, are they going to beat and cover against Colorado State? The look-ahead number, boys and girls, for this game in Vegas was Colorado 10. We are now at Colorado 23, 23 and a half, and I, I – I feel like I must take the dog, but I I also wouldn't be surprised if they won 38 to 10. So I, I think we saved this one here. Obviously, Oregon is a much bigger test, but yeah, this Colorado thing is crazy, and I think I might hate them. I might. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I think we need to get past though, like the look ahead lines with Colorado. Like we were all long, the priors were all wrong. I mean, I understand Nebraska had their chances last week, and Sims, I mean, did everything he could to give the game to Colorado. But I mean, this team is just way better than we thought. I mean, the, the receivers are real. There is obviously talent there. I mean, I do think there's still deficiencies along both lines, and there's going to be ways to play against them. There's going to be opportunities to play against them. Uh, I think Oregon next week is a really tough spot. But man, I, I don't know that I want to get in front of this team right now. I mean, that being said, that 23 is a lot of points. Um, you know, Colorado State did recruit Shadur Sanders. I don't know if there's bad blood there. I don't know how that factors into like, is he going to want to run up the score here? Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I think for me, I'm hoping that Colorado State gets blown out. Colorado yes. comes in there. They win 45-10. And that Oregon look-ahead number right now is Oregon favored by 14 and a half. 
and that starts creeping down and down and down as people start betting Colorado, and we get a great number for Oregon. Uh, it'd be fantastic uh, to take them after they play Hawaii. They're back at home. Colorado goes back on the road after all this hype, and to me, that's the spot to take uh, someone else was to take Oregon or even the following week take USC going into Boulder. Uh, so I hope Colorado destroys Colorado State. I think they actually will in the end. It might start a little bit slower, and then we get a much better number for Oregon. That's the thing. I don't think normally this would be like if we were any other team, if we were a normal team, this would be the ultimate play against spot because you have the 21-point upset win over, over TCU. You have your home opener where you beat Nebraska. Next week, you have Oregon. Like, this is like the, the rotten, stale sandwich game of all time for a normal team. But this is not a normal team. Like, I don't think they're wired that way to be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go through the motions against Colorado State. I, I think they're out, like, to score points against anybody that they play. So it would not, like, like Sammy, I think, put it best. Like, this is not a train I want to get in front of right now, uh, especially – um, at home and, and, and with Sanders and, and company wanting to put up a big number. But I think most smart betters, sharp betters are waiting to see what happens this week, hoping, like Jeff said, for Colorado to win just to see what that number might be next week. Kidding aside, though, like, is there a bet still like, is there a bet out there that still might have value on Colorado? Cause I, I think the coach of the year market might, uh, if, look, if they, go, if they go six and six, like, He's got a shot to win, coach. The other, you're going to get three this week. You got what Arizona still. You've got um, Stanford. Stanford, who's been Wazoo. You might be able to beat the Arizona State. You probably be like six and six or seven and five is on the table. I'm like normally, what it takes nine or ten wins to be coach of the year. But if you go from one and eleven and just completely turn this team around and get to a bowl game, like he's live to win coach of the year, isn't he? Yeah, I certainly think so. I mean, with coach of the year, we see these in, in all these markets, you know, the Sacramento Kings are bad forever. They're finally good. You reward the coach with coach of the year. We saw it with the giants with Dable, you know, a few years ago with Stefanski uh, in the Cleveland Browns. So yeah, if you can get to seven wins, that's probably the magic number right around there. Uh, and look bear, you and I both live in Connecticut. It's hard to find these markets. We can't even bet the Heisman. I don't think here. So you got to look around. Can't, can't there. bet the Heisman can't bet college football, football playoff either. Frustrating. Brutal. It's frustrating, but it's a good bet. What about no? What about if Penn State goes eleven and one? Let's have that conversation because that's possible. Look, this quarterback Drew Aller might be the best quarterback in the Big Ten, and it's been a long time since we've been able to say that about a Penn State quarterback. I think that this kid is making all the throws. And granted, they haven't had like a really tough test yet. They've beaten West Virginia and Delaware, but you watch some of these dimes he's throwing. <laughs> they are they are right on target. He's throwing guys open, and they have like three really good running backs behind a solid offensive line. And everybody talks about Michigan and Ohio state this year. If Penn state goes 11 and one, James Franklin's going to get a lot of love for the, for the best coach in college football. Well, he'll, he'll win that award. If they go 11 and one, as you mentioned, and look, their offensive line is fantastic. I love watching them play. And they finally have a quarterback. As, as you mentioned, they should have a tougher schedule, right? They're on that side of the big 10. When you have Michigan, you have Ohio state, you have Michigan state. It's a, it's a tougher road for them. To, to go 11 and one, they got to win a lot of games that I don't think they've won in the past. But Franklin, he will 100% win this award if they finish as high as 11 and one. Good segue talking about Penn State, by the way. Well, Jeff, uh, Sammy, and Jeff, I appreciate it because so a little bit of a, a cluster of games this week. Like, look, this week's slate of games is not good if, as a whole. But if you look at Florida State at BC, Penn State at Illinois, Tennessee at Florida, LSU at Mississippi State. Like all these teams, all these ranked favorites on the road is a touchdown favorite or more against a conference opponent. It's still college football. We see it every week. One of these, one of these ranked favorites is going to go on the road, I think, and find themselves in a game. Sammy, I'm guessing you don't think it's going to be the Nittany Lions. I don't like Illinois' defense, Bear. That's really the issue for me. I know they've got Newton up front, who's uh, you know a preseason All-American candidate, and I think they have some things that you like on that side of the ball. But losing three guys in the secondary has clearly hindered what they do. I mean, Kansas tore them up last week. I don't really want to lay 15 on the road with Penn State. Here's the game. I'm, I'm warning you. There's a little sleepy. Who does Florida State have on deck? They got to go to Clemson, Death Clemson. Valley on the road. That's the one, you know, and, and you look at this market and, and we obviously all look at the market all the time. Circa opened this 28 and a half Florida state laying that at Chestnut Hill, that thing crossed right away through 28 
and now it's down to 26. Now, you're going to sweat this out if you're taking BC because they're not that good. But <laughs> in terms of spot, this is not the spot to lay 26 and a half with Florida State when Clemson is on deck. I like and Florida. A quick look uh, at the weather. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, quick look at the weather as well. It is supposed to be brutal in, in Chestnut Hill this week. 25 mile an hour yeah. wind showers all day. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think this is a game you want to get involved in laying a bunch of points. I think this is just one of those classic Dickie V survive and advance type games for, for the Knowles. Uh, if you got 28 or 28 and a half, good job. Well, sorry. I interrupted you. Go, go for it, my man. No, I was going to say, I like Florida. And man, if you've been betting these games for a long time, there's definitely a little bit of a sticker shock when you see Tennessee laying basically a touchdown on the road. It's down to six and a half now in Florida. Like my, how the times have changed, but I like Florida. I think there's a little bit of a shock here for Tennessee. Who's played two cupcakes. They played while well, Austin P in Virginia. Now you're going to go to the swamp. That's a night game. That crowd is going to be loud. They're going to be well hydrated. Um, I think that, you know, <laughs> look, Florida's played okay here that, you know, they, they did hold Utah to 270 yards, a total offense they've got that test and where you know they're more battle tested so far than tennessee is you know milton on the road i think that's a shaky spot mertz has actually played okay completing what 74 75 percent of his passes uh, i could see florida hanging around i wouldn't be shocked if they won that game you're missing the best number now mostly six and a halves but i think florida is live to cover that one do you guys look at at sort of the discipline of a team and wager them i, I watched florida play utah and this has been a problem under napier they're an undisciplined football team, right? Penalties, turnovers, just kind of soul-crushing plays that happen. Ten guys on the field, 12 guys on the field, wrong numbers on special teams. Like, to me, I can't wager on a program. And I, I agree with all the points you made, Will. Like, they're, they're absolutely correct about the gameplay. But when I have an undisciplined team playing a team like Tennessee that doesn't make those same mistakes, and Tennessee goes fast on offense, right? Can Florida line up on defense on time? Things we saw they had trouble with against Utah. So I, I, I love the, the, the play here, but the problem is I can't bet on a coach where I don't trust their team to be disciplined. Yeah, I'd prefer I to just make the bet, lose it, and complain okay. after. Yeah, yeah, I, I like to make the bet, lose, and then just complain about it for a long time. But yeah. <laughs> who, who hasn't done that before? I mean, I might have a little more to say about Penn State, Illinois. I'll come, come up a little bit. So we had, we had two massive favorites this week. Texas coming off the win against Alabama. Georgia, certainly no love lost at all between Kirby Smart and Shane Beamer. So I think if – Kirby gets a chance to run it up. You might who 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 you rather lay the uh, the big number with Georgia or Texas? Uh, I'll, I'll take Georgia. I think so, you know. I'll, I'll go with Georgia. I think they've just sort of gone through the motions a little bit. They've acted like a team that's won two titles in a row. They're better than all these teams they've played. I think they, you know, if sometimes these coaches comments can be, uh, you know, it's just coach speak. You don't really get anything out of them. Kirby smarts not been happy with their energy level, their effort level, just their execution. So they have another gear, I think. And I think we see that this week. It, it has to be Georgia for me, if I'm choosing one or the other. And I think all the points that, that will mentioned are, are, are the reasons why, right? I mean, they played, you know, two, uh, two, uh, group of five teams look lackluster in most of, of, of the 120 minutes played. Now they get a real opponent, a conference opponent, and there's bad blood between the coaching staffs. Like to me, this is the opportunity for Georgia to show, okay, we're the same team we've been the last couple of years. I know we've kind of lollygagged in the first two games. And by the way, they've they've lollygagged and also dominated those games. But now they get a first opportunity. I believe they're at home again. I feel like most of their games this season are at home. And so I feel like this is the opportunity for them to really show, okay, we're that same team as last year. Versus Texas, man, they just won their Super Bowl. I know they have in Oklahoma in a few weeks, but they won on the road at Alabama. And a game that, by the way, the final score, I think, was what? 34 24 it was much closer than that for most of the game uh texas was able to to do a, a few good things late and find some open wide receivers uh, so to me it would be georgia and, and you just lay off texas or fade them in this game yeah it's always tough to play alabama i know texas had its way with alabama but the physicality in the trenches we all know this alabama usually beats you up and that's usually tough to get up that next game but wyoming i mean when you look at this game it's totaled at 48 and a half with a line of almost 30. So the odds makers are telling you Wyoming might get 10. You know, like that's the reality. Like you might take 28 and then you're down 28 to nothing in the second quarter. And then that's usually uh, a wayward bet. I, can I answer this in a different way? I'd rather take 38 yes. with Hawaii than Oregon. I mean, we all know Oregon's got Colorado coming up. This? What do you mean? Because this is the spot. Like, is Oregon going to win 70 to nothing? Actually, Jeff, don't answer that because no. I know what you're going to say. 
there. What's the final <laughs> score, Oregon Hawaii? I would I would take I uh, I'm gonna say fifty six to twenty one. How about that? Those numbers I, work. I, I'm 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 someone, someone, I, someone might reach across no, the table no, no, right no, here. No. I mean, I, I like Oregon first half in that game, if you're asking my opinion on that game. I think they'd come out first half and then shut it down the second half as they have Colorado coming up because they didn't play terribly well on offense. Just like the third shot you've taken at Oregon in this show, Sammy. I don't like that. I know you're upset that they covered last weekend. You also mocked me for picking Miami as well, and they dominate AM. So I know there's a little animosity this week about some of my wagers from last weekend that went well. The Oregon no, was no, 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 I get no, no. that. I, just, was, no, I, I love Oregon. I was at the Rose Bowl when they beat Wisconsin. Let's not get it twisted. I just, you know, we have to we have to take our shots when we can. 38 is a lot, uh, especially with Colorado coming up next and off a, a physical game against Texas Tech. But Hawaii is bad. Like I thought they'd be okay. better this season. They they're they're really a not a good football team. Stanford went in there and dominated them. And what did Stanford lose? 56-10 last weekend to USC. I know they lost their starting quarterback, but um it wasn't very it wasn't very close. <laughs> I, I see a Nebraska and Northern Illinois here. I see an 11. Uh, actually, I don't think that's the spread. I think that's the number of Jeff Sims turnovers uh, <laughs> in, in the game. But uh, anything else uh, you guys want to sneak in here? What game game we're missing? Pick, pick I, have one. I have one. I feel like this game's sort of being ignored. Uh, Washington is going on the road to Michigan State. They're favored by about 16 right now. I know Michigan State has some turmoil on, on the coaching side, but Washington plays much worse on grass, which is weird because they should be fine on grass. But last season, they lost uh, their, I believe, both their games on grass last season, the UCLA and Arizona State. They haven't played as well on the road last season as well. This one feels interesting because I feel like this is one of those, like, rally, Michigan State rallies behind the, the interim coach and, like, goes and plays pretty well against Washington. Okay. I don't know. So this is a Friday game. It's a quick turnaround, but it's worth discussing here. You know me, Bear. I'm trying to dig through the garbage on every campus the best I can. And and let's be clear, Welcome getting information from UTSA is like breaking into Watergate. They don't say anything down there. But they tweeted My yesterday. My guy there is gone, unfortunately. I hate it. <laughs> UTSA yeah, Two years ago, I would have had good info for you. Well, they, UTSA tweeted a picture of their starting quarterback, Frank Harris, wearing a boot, passing out like cupcakes on campus. He's got a boot on. Ooh. So I I don't think he's going to play. It also doesn't help UTSA that this is a Friday game off a Saturday game. Uh, Harris took a shot in the last game to his foot, got injections in his toe. He talked about it on Twitter, but oftentimes that's worse than next week. I'm going to take nine here with, uh, with, with Army against UTSA on Friday night. Yeah, I'll lay it with LSU. I mean, we talked about season wins. What's our favorite season win bet a couple weeks ago when I was really down on Mississippi State. I just thought programming transition, offensive line has to change how they play. Just a, a total you know, upheaval in terms of the program. I haven't seen anything to take me off of that position. I thought they were very lucky to beat Arizona. They really don't have much of a running game. You know, they're, they're just a, kind of a mess on offense. I think LSU can win that game and win it pretty comfortably. So usually not my nature to lay nine and a half, ten on the road, but I think LSU wins that game going away. Mississippi State forced five turnovers and had to win an overtime against Arizona right. this past weekend. Not the best performance for them. No, that, that, that was the Arizona State game against Oklahoma. That's an interesting game this week. And I almost went to South Alabama plus the points in Stillwater against Oklahoma State because before the year, I thought this would be a, a tricky game. But that, Oklahoma State, that, how bad was Arizona State last week in that game? They're like, not good. One of five on fourth down, giving, it, giving Oklahoma State short field. Cowboys still don't know who their quarterback is, but I, I, I don't know. I don't, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I was off on my read for South Alabama, so I stayed away from that game this week. But, uh, uh, of, of course, now because I stayed away from it, that means the Jags <laughs> go on the road and, and shock the world. But, uh, yeah, for so, every, every year we, I say the same thing about Gundy. They find ways to win these toss-up type games that they, they, you, you would normally say it's 50-50, but they're like 22-6 and six now in games with, un, under him where, like, the number closes within within four points or fewer. So, hey, you find what, 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 whatever magic voodoo doll he has, it, it's working, so keep doing it. Very quickly, I need to Arizona bring up State. I feel like it's one of those teams that we don't realize is really bad yet. 
Like Arizona State has played two games. They beat Southern Utah 24-21, and they lost 27-15 to Oklahoma State. I feel like they're a team that that's the team that we haven't started to kind of just auto-fade until they get good, and everyone thought they might be better this season with Kenny Dillingham. I think he's a really good football coach and might be good, but they're 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 pretty bad at football so far. <laughs> and I don't know what's going to make them much better in a really strong Pac-12. Is There's eight ranked teams in the Pac-12. Arizona State is not one of them. I feel like they're a team that we haven't realized yet is just sort of an auto-fade for now. Yeah, I need to bring something up here because Bears, we know, went to the University of Miami and his team was in the Elite Eight in college basketball. He bets against them. Last week, they had this great, you know, <laughs> turning point win against, uh, you know, a, a team in Texas A&M. He was betting against them. What happened? Did you have a bad experience there? Is this a self-loathing? Like, what is going on with you? It's a little bit of reverse psychology, I guess. But no, I, I had questions. Well, I didn't well, well I did not expect the Houston Cougars like everybody on the roster going back to Clyde Drexler to get hurt for that Sweet 16 matchup. So like I, I didn't expect that, but that was an awesome run. And of course they did have a Texas to win the region ticket, which they wound up blowing up in the uh in the in the Elite Eight coming back from 15 down or whatever it was. Yeah, I I, I was high on AM. I, I thought they would go in there and I thought that defensive line would get pressure on Van Dyke. I thought the offensive line would, and it did not happen. Like it, I told you, it, 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 you did tell me yeah. should, I should have listened to my co-host, but no, I, I think moving fo forward, this is as good of a feeling I have about the trajectory of this program as I have in a long time. It appears like, and I think Jeff will tell you being an Oregon guy as well. Like one of the knocks on Mario Cristobal has been at times, he's kind of meddled in the offense a little bit yes. with his coordinators. <laughs> and I think what we saw last <laughs> week and the week before, I think it shows that Shannon Dawson is in total control of this offense and he's letting Shannon Dawson do the job and Van Dyke is taken to it. And now you look at the schedule, they'll be favored. They should be favored in every game with the maybe against right. with the exception of what Florida, uh, Florida state and yeah. Clemson. So, 10 and two in a, uh, an ACC championship game. But how, how about that? If we finally get with all this re, uh, re reconstruction in college football and everything in the fight, one of the, one of the, in the, in the ACC, which is in upheaval, you get a Miami, Florida state ACC title That'd game in a, in a year before like the, the, the entire landscape goes away. Hey, with all the nice things about Miami though, you should bet Bethune Cookman tonight when they take Miami because Miami to your point. They, they host Bethune Cookman tonight. I believe it's plus 48 and a half. It's just a classic letdown spot. If you're looking for some action on Thursday night that's not the NFL, I think you take – no? No bear? You're gonna oh, I, oh I absolutely would take Bethune Cook with yeah. 48 or 48 and a half, without a doubt. They'll win this game Sounds like 42-7. Like like just – <laughs> yeah, fun night of action. Hey, man, we're giving you bets that we actually wager on. I'm going to wager on Bethune Cookman tonight. I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll live vicariously through you on, on that one I'm, as I'm sitting in a, uh, in a Boulder hotel. All right, gentlemen, always fun, always good info. Appreciate you, and we'll talk again next week. Thanks to the guys as usual. A great gambling group chat. I hope you guys got a lot of information there for your college football weekend. Let's get to a recap of, of Bears bets so far before we get to our best bets for the week. His first bet here is Ohio plus three hosting Iowa State. He has Purdue plus two and a half. They're hosting Syracuse. And one more home team here, Texas A&M minus a 36 hosting Louisiana Monroe in a, in a get right spot for AM after their loss to Miami. All right, Bear, what is your best bet of the week? Look, they're really, in, in, and Sammy was talking about this game in, in the group chat. Like, there isn't much about Illinois to be really excited about off of the first two performed. They probably should have lost their opener at home. And then they were never in the game uh, against Kansas last week. But there's something about conference road games that just make it tricky sometimes. You've got Drew Aller making his first road start. You're laying 15 on the road in Champaign against a team that played terrible last week in, in, in Lawrence, and you would expect them to come out and play the best game of the year. So I'm taking Illinois plus the 15. Remember, too, go back and look at Penn State the last three years. And again, it, it could just be circumstance. It could be something. It could be nothing. Last year, their first conference road game, or their first road game, was a game at Purdue where they needed to come back and some help from the clock management area that Jeff Brom kind of butchered things yeah. at the end of that game. Won 35-31, I think it was. Two years ago, went to Camp Randall, stru struggled off and mightily against a Wisconsin team that wasn't a vintage Wisconsin team, won by six. 2020, the COVID year, went on the road to Indiana, lost in overtime to, to the Hoosiers. So, like, last three years, like, you look at their first road game, like, yeah, teams change, circumstances stays the same. Like, Going on the road for the first time, Matt, I think there is something to it. 
you kind of lose your comfort zone. Maybe you haven't been prepared with some of the a tougher non-conference schedule early in the year to prepare you for a game like that. So look, I, I think I think 15 is too much here. I don't think Illinois can win the game, but but I, I would think defensively they'll play their best game of the year against Aller in that offense. And uh, I'm going to grab the points with the Illini. What do you got for us this week? For my best bet, uh, I'm taking Colorado State plus 13 and a half for the first half of the game against Colorado. This is an opportunity, I think, to wager on the college football emotions, right, of players. Um, Colorado just had two straight big new kickoff games. Big games, national TV, a lot of attention. They beat TCU. They beat their rival Nebraska. Now comes lowly Colorado State. 0-1, didn't play terribly well, and Colorado State's off a bye as well. But then Colorado next weekend goes to Oregon and then hosts USC. So this is a spot right now. I know the coaches are going to say, hey, hey, guys, get up for the game. Like, come on, don't. But, like, this game to them, they're going to be down a little bit early on. And Colorado State's off a bye. I actually think Colorado might cover the full game spread, Bear. But I think in the first half, this game is tight. This game is close. They throw everything they have offensively at Colorado. Defensively, Colorado State was good last season as well. They're, they're one of the best in the country on, on defense. I think this is just a play on, on college football emotions. Now, the down game for Colorado doesn't mean I think they stink. I actually think, again, they could cover the full game. But first half of like Colorado State here. I think that's interesting because normally you would say in, in, a, in a game where you've got a big game next week on the road, come out cover the first half line, and then maybe you get back door later and kind of take your foot off the gas. So it's a little different take on it than what yeah, I'm hearing. I, because I think Colorado State is not terribly good. <laughs> and I think the second <laughs> half of this game, uh, and we watched them play at Washington State where they just couldn't move the ball offensively, right. which was their problem last year as well. I think Colorado overtakes them late in the game. Just too much right. offense, too much speed, um, and, and too much just – too much Colorado, right? But the first half, of Colorado State's off a bye. Like, this is a weird week two bye they're off yeah, of. Yeah, we had an opening and, game yes. and then a week, two, very, very strange schedule. They're going to have three, like, offensive shot trick plays. Like, they're going to throw everything in Colorado uh, early on. And look, it's a night game as well. They play two straight day games. Like, to me, it just feels like they come out a little bit slower than they have in the first two games. And I'll take them here. Before, as we talked about earlier, I, I cannot wait for next weekend because I will probably bet on Oregon. They're there. Uh, you you will probably bet on Oregon. Yeah, there, there's shocker. The, I, I, didn't bet, say, I, didn't, I bet in bet on last weekend. We talked about this. I just I just was betting against. I was hoping you would lose. Yeah, I was yeah thank I was you. Better. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're welcome. You're, 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 you're so kind. <laughs> on that note, we're gonna uh, we're gonna bid bid farewell for this episode. Big new kickoff presents bear bets. Those are our best bets. Catch up on our earlier bets earlier in the show. We talked about those at length. Appreciate you all downloading, watching, listening. Let's all have a great week subscribe check us out on friday for the nfl pod as well and remember the less you bet the more you lose when you win